episode number two of our Japan franchise mode. Let's get right into this. Welcome back, guys. So, I have some things to announce, and it's in part to you guys. A lot of people were telling me on Twitter and in the comments. Uh, this morning, I was actually in the Tim Hortons lineup, and I was scrolling through my comments, and uh, actually on Twitter as well. I got so many people telling me pretty much the exact same thing. So, in the first episode, I said I wanted to make this as challenging as I possibly possibly could. Now, it does not make sense for Team Japan, a new team in the NHL, to have a stacked AHL team and, and to have a whole bunch of prospects. The Arizona Coyotes are not in the NHL anymore, so why should their prospects be available to us? So, what I did is I dumped everybody to free agency. I dumped everyone that the Arizona Coyotes had, all of Reckman Larson, Dylan Strom, Shane Doan, Mike Smith, Anthony Duclair, Max Domi, so that the other 29 teams in the NHL have a shot at signing one of these players, which will help out a uh, team in need, because, I mean, you look at all of Reckman Larson, he would be just amazing to, uh, to have. So, I mean, it made sense for me to do that. I think that was the right thing to do. Instead of just letting those players go to nothing, you're going to see them on a new team eventually, whenever they do end up signing. Now, if you're wondering where uh, the young guys are, where is Dylan Strom, where is, uh, I think the other one was um, Jacob Chitrin was the one that I'm trying to think of. Where are they? You're, they're obviously not here, so where are they? So I ended up throwing all of the young guns right to free agency, and when they went to free agency, for some reason they get sent back to their uh, to their junior team. So they're actually re-entered into the draft, which is pretty cool. So you're going to see Chitrin and Dylan Strom, and I think that's it, uh, be drafted this year. So that's kind of cool cool how they got put back into the draft for another team to draft. I mean, you have a player like Dylan Strom or Jacob Chitter and it's going to be awesome for another team. So instead of letting all those players just disappear into thin air, we're going to go ahead and let the other 29 teams have a crack at signing uh, one of those players. I mean, whoever gets all of Rickman Larson gets a steal, uh, but aside from that, I mean, that's pretty much the fairest thing I could possibly do. Uh, so I had to go through and I had to restart the franchise mode, so that's why we're back here at the preseason. I also went ahead and I made a few players better. Uh, I made some rookies better. I didn't touch anybody in the NHL. I just made some prospects better. I made Timothy Lilligren pretty good. Uh, I made uh, made Nolan Patrick really, really good. Because I notice when you uh, when you draft these players, when you draft Nolan Patrick, or if you uh, when you draft uh, Timothy Lilligren, they take quite a bit of time to get good, like year five or year six. And I don't want to wait that long. I want players to be ready within year two. I want I want to see some 90 pluses. I want to see 100 point seasons. I want to have some fun with this. I wouldn't be doing Team Japan if I didn't want to have fun with it. So I ended up making them pretty decent and I also made Nico Hersher or Nico Hisher. I don't know how to pronounce his name uh, but he is a kid right now who's making a lot of noise. He is a Swiss born player and he's ripping it up at the World Juniors. He's impressing a lot of people and he's actually uh, in the talks of going first overall ahead of Nolan Patrick. So I went ahead and I made him pretty decent as well. So you're probably going to see those three be the top three picks. So I went ahead and I signed a bunch of players in free agency, just a bunch of decently young players. This guy is only like 20 years old and he's already 62 overall with the top six potential. So that's kind of nice. I also went ahead and I signed the dream team. There it is. Alexander Semin, Danny Heatley, and Oli freaking Jokinen. I also signed Lucas Lesio because we we're talking about him earlier and Dylan Olsen as well as the Benic Mahalik. So pretty much everyone that I wanted, I went ahead and I got them. We're going to go ahead and put the lines together and then I'll see you guys at the start of the year. We're going to get the entire thing done this year. We're just going to go, we're going to go hard with the simulation. So get a snack, stop the video right now, go get a snack, get a beer. If you're not old enough to get a beer, get a, get a fruit punch. Just relax. We're going to get a big giant video. We're going to get a bunch of simulation done. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. So let me go ahead and set the lines and go get yourself a snack. So here we are. We're just about to get things started with Team Japan. 
Oh boy, we're in for a rough year. We are seriously in for an ass kicking of a year. So you can see since we signed those players, we have 63 offense now, which is pretty much terrible. Uh, you can see here, Danny Heatley, Ole Jokinen, and Alexander Semin. What a line. I'm actually interested to see what kind of numbers they're going to put up. Uh, we got Lucas Lesio, Yoshida, and Wakabayashi. That is a hell of a line. And then the rest is really just a bunch of garbage. Defensively, Dylan Olsen and Zabinik Mahalik. That's a decent pairing. That's like a third line pairing on like a bad team. Uh, as for the goaltenders, I'm not going to screw with anything. We're going to go with my boy Fukufuji uh, just for year number one. No matter what, it's going to be a shit show. And this guy has played four career games in the NHL. You can see there uh, four games, three in the AH, sorry, five in the AHL, three victories. Actually played pretty good in the uh, AHL with the, I guess it was the Manchester Monarchs. Uh, but in the NHL, NHL, couldn't really put it together. Goals against average of 4.38, but he is going to get his time to shine. This is his time. He has in his home team, Team Japan. He didn't get a good shot with the LA Kings. Jonathan Quick ended up taking over after the legend Fukufuji went back to Japan, but his team's back. He's ready to get his first ever NHL shot against the Philadelphia Flyers. So this is going to be a long one. We're going to sim the entire thing because there really isn't a whole lot I can do up until the draft and free agency because we are going to be the worst team in the league. There is no question about that. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the draft lottery and all that stuff in a couple of minutes. First period, game number one, Team Japan. Can we score a goal? No, we cannot. Sean Couturier beats Fukufuji. I uh, actually made 11 stops in the first period. We only got two shots, though. Period number two, 5 nothing. Voracek. Couturier gets the hat trick, and uh, Voracek gets two. Third period. 10 to nothing. <laughs> Fuck. Holy crap. Voracek had a hat trick. Couturier had four goals. Oh my god. That's pretty much how every game is going to go. Look at Wayne Simmons. Six points. Get that guy a 99 player of the game card. Holy shit. Alright. Well, that is pretty much what I was expecting to be honest with you. I was thinking about what players I wanted to get and kind of what are my goals for this franchise in year one and year two. Well, I'd like to be a team that we actually scored a goal, which is pretty awesome. I'd like to be a team that kind of gives players a second chance. You know, like a throwaway player like for example Anthony Mantha is a guy who is actually doing pretty well right now but over the last couple years people have been saying is he going to make it you know is he actually going to be good all this if ands or buts so why not give him first line minutes in Japan where he would be playing you know six to ten minutes per night in Detroit why not give him 23 minutes per night and let him actually progress you know I've seen people who are low elite and they stay low elite at like a 82 83 overall but I have seen you if you play a low oh my god we won three nothing no way we just shut out the avalanche Fuka Fuji you are the goat oh my god we actually won I did not expect us to win holy crap I was not even expect us to win a game and we shut out the avalanche that could be your only win ever Fuka Fuji and it's a shutout this guy is going out on top. Unbelievable. A shutout victory. That's incredible. Oh, man, that's awesome. I literally was not expecting to get one win this whole year. We get a shutout on top of that. That's beautiful. Uh, so I've... <laughs> Back to what I was originally going to say. Um, if you play low elite players with a lot of ice time, they will get better. Uh, it happened with Jake Bean. It's happened with a lot of other players. I've done a lot of uh, I've done a lot of off camera franchise modes where I give players like a low elite who are like 82 overall, and I play them first line minutes for like two or three years. Boom, they're 87, 88 overall. I think that can happen with our team. I want to give players a shot. Literally any player in the NHL is going to be better than what we have right now so why not give a guy a, a shot you know what maybe their trade value is kind of low they're a low elite why not give them 20 minutes a night why not see what can happen so I think that's kind of the I think that's kind of the goal that I'm gonna be uh, heading towards in the offseason because I know for a fact that Tyler Johnson is going to be in free agency year number one and I mean what real benefit does it make for us to sign an 87 overall centerman when we don't have anyone to play around him so 
I'm really not going to look to be a contending team in year one or year two. I mean, obviously not year one. We're one and 30, for Christ's sakes. But I don't think that we're going to be a competitive team till like the mid of year three and year four, which is also why I think that this franchise mode is going to last like seven to ten years, which is awesome because I, uh, I want to do a long franchise mode. I want to draft players. I want to get some storylines going. I just want to have fun with it. I'm so bored with just the regular... NHL team. It's just the same shit just cycled over and over and over. That's why I'm doing Japan. I want to have some fun with it. But uh, those are kind of my goal. I was actually thinking a lot about this. Like, what am I going to do with this franchise mode? Like, how can I keep it interesting? And I think no matter what, it's going to be interesting because anywhere that we go up is going to be a success. We actually scored three goals there against the Rangers. Almost had our second victory. Pretty much anything after this. Seven to six? How are we scoring all these goals? We have two victories. We are on a playoff push. Oh my god. 7-6 to six win against the Canucks. Holy crap. And then we get spanked 7-2 to two and 10-1. to one. So we beat Colorado and we ended up beating the Canucks, which is hilarious. Two of the worst teams this year. Although the Canucks have been doing very well lately. But uh, wow, that's awesome. So yeah, that's kind of my goals. I want to be very slow and very patient with this. There's no reason 14-1 we lost there. Holy shit. We suck. Um, there's no reason for us to sign Tyler Johnson. There's no reason. It's just, why? You know, there's no point whatsoever. Absolutely no point for us to sign Tyler Johnson in year two and have him play around nobody. There's no point at all. Um, one more point I did want to make, well a few more points actually, is the draft lottery. So I went ahead and I uh, made those three players better for a reason. Because we could lose out on the draft lottery. There is a shot that we could lose the draft lottery this year. I know, sounds crazy, a team that has two wins could drop down to third or fourth place. That could happen. And I can't wait, can we beat the Canucks again for the second time in a month? And we lose 4-1. Okay, well, that's not the worst thing in the world. We got another victory. I'm happy with that. But we could lose the draft lottery. So I went ahead and I made those three players uh, pretty good. I made Nolan Patrick like 76 overall with the medium elite. Or sorry, with the high elite. I made Timothy Lilligren medium elite. And then I made that Nico Hischer guy. I still think it's Hischer or Hischer. I don't know how to pronounce it. You guys can let me know. I'm pretty sure it's Hischer though. Nico Hischler. Uh, such a weird name, but I made him a uh, a high elite as well. Cause I've heard a lot of crazy things about this guy, and I edited a few other players who are scouted to go in the top 10 or top 5. I made them a little bit better. I don't like seeing players you draft in year 1 don't get good till like year 5. It's kind of boring. So that's the reason why I uh, screwed with the potentials a little bit. What else did I do? Um... I also uh, made a few players better. Not, nothing too crazy. I didn't make anyone like 89 out of the draft or anything, but just a few players. I didn't touch anybody in the NHL. I left that as is. Uh, but we're 258 and 0. Oh my god. Well, that's awesome. That's just fantastic. We are exactly where I thought we would be and exactly where I want us to be. I'm going to make a prediction here that we get one more victory before the year is over. We get one more, all right? And we end up giving up 500 goals, okay? I'm thinking we're going to allow 500 goals. I think our goals against is going to be around the 500 mark. Let's not just set the record for most goals allowed. Let's crush it. Let's make sure no team ever comes close to that. Uh, okay, we actually failed to make the playoffs 2-60 and 60, uh, right after the trade deadline. We are eliminated from playoff contention. So just a prediction, I think that we're going to win one more game. We're going to end the season with three wins and we are going to uh, we're going to allow 500 goals and maybe score 100 and 12 goals, 112 goals. I don't know. It kind of seems like a reasonable number. Um, if we're scoring like two goals per game, yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I uh, don't mean there's. I mean, if we're scoring like one and a half, two goals a game, but we are getting shut out a ton. I'm going to say 112 goals we scored and 506 goals we allow. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Uh, I do want to see the trade deadline, see what's going on with uh, with the trading, see if anyone got dealt. Uh, you can see here Colorado acquired a bunch of randoms and Chicago got Rene Bork and New Jersey got Dennis Seidenberg for a second and a prospect. As for signings, let's see where all those players signed. Let's see what all of Reckman Larson signed. Let's see all that stuff. Um, 
I want to see actually who's still available in the free agency. Oh, I, I can't. Shit, I did it before, after the trade deadline. Unfortunately, I can't see. I can't even go to trade players, unfortunately. So that sucks. But regardless, we are going to get the last 20 games done. And then we're going to uh, head into the draft. And I think that I may get the draft done in this episode too. I may just go straight through all the way to the draft. I mean, there's really no point for me just to cut it off before the draft because then there's no conversation in the comments. If I go all the way to free agency, uh, there's at least some conversation there down below where you guys can say, hey, I think you should sign this guy because of this or this guy because of that. 2-1 uh, loss. We almost had a victory there. Um, but yeah, I think I might just do the draft here. Let's just get it all done. Let's just go for it. I'm going hard in the simulation. Uh, really, there's no reason for us to look at stats. There's no reason for us to look at who's doing well because literally everyone's doing shitty. Every Everyone sucks, and <laughs> that's, that's kind of fine. I mean, everyone's going to be awful. Everybody sucks. That's just the way it is right now. Uh, we're almost done the regular season. 273-0. Come on, guys. Give me one more victory. 9-2. We almost won there. 2-1. to one. We are scoring about a goal per game, it looks like. If we score over two, we're doing pretty good. We had a pretty good game if we score more than two goals. Uh, let's see if we can beat the Canucks in our second last game to get our third victory of the year. Oh boy. All right, let's go here. I want to be I want to be 3 wins deep. I want to go 3. Come on, we can do it. Japanese power. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but let's go 13-2. Uh, okay, you know what? You can only bounce back from a 13-2 game to a team who's 29-40-10. and 10. If they beat us out for the draft lottery, I will be pissed. Let's go here, first period. 6-3. Holy shit, that's quite the first period. So Dorset, Goodbranson, Spiza. Dor Dorset has a hat trick in the first period. Of course Dorset has a hat trick in the first period, because why wouldn't Derek Dorset? That have a hat trick in the first period. Why not? Uh, wow. Okay. Alexander Semin and then Danny Heatley, the fucking all star, gets two goals. Period number two, eight to three. Brandon Gaunts and Michael Grand. Then we get five. Heatley gets the Hattie, but uh, Derek Dorsett pretty much won that game for the Vancouver Canucks. Ah, that's pretty good. Heater gets a hat trick in probably one of his last games. I think this is his last game, or we have one more game after that. Granlin, five points. Heater with four. Dorsett with four. Bunch of quality players right there. Bunch of quality gentlemen. Uh, up against the Wild here. Can we beat the Wild? We came close to beating the Canucks, but that damn Derek Dorsett, he'll get you every single time. Can we get three wins? I want to go three and 79. I don't want to go two and 80. Let's go. Period number one. 2-1. Okay, Alexander Semin. There you go. Period number two. Okay, this game is over. Uh, Alexander Semin gets two, and unfortunately, that's how we end the year with only two victories. Only two. That's fine, though, because uh, that's kind of where I expected us. 2-80-0. It's not good. It's not good. There's really nowhere to go but up. I know that's like a cliche thing to say, but we literally can't go anywhere but up. There's no point in us to go anywhere else but up. It's the only spot we can realistically go here is up. Um, Looks like our AHL team did not make the postseason either. Let's look at the stats. You know what? I'm going to go all the way to the draft. Uh, you know what? Actually, no. We're going to do this all right now. Then I'm going to sim to the draft so I can have a drink of water. And then uh, we'll look at who actually won the draft lottery. Hopefully we did. Uh, Alexander Semin led our team in points with 55. Uh, but he was a minus 103. So that's always nice to see. Uh, 19 goals, 36 helpers. Where's he? Peter, there he is, 52 points, a, uh, a modest minus 91, uh, 21 goals, 31 assists. This guy is a beast. What a monster. Ole Okunin finishes with 26 points and a minus 108. Uh, Wakabayashi with 28 points. <laughs> Wakabayashi, a 60 overall, had more points than Lucas Lesio, who's 77 overall. But I mean, I guess, Lucas Lesio, you are playing with a 60 overall guy. So you know what? The heat's off you. Don't worry about it. Really, no one else did good. Everyone else sucked. Uh, who had the lowest uh, plus minus? And it is uh, Shugahara. Shugahara. I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. But he has the lowest plus minus at uh, minus 55. And the highest is Dylan Olsen and Zabinik Mahalik at minus 157. Not good. 
that's not good at all. Uh, looking at the goaltenders here, I think that their goals against average is going to be 6 point... 6.58 for uh, Fuka Fuji. 6.58, 7.30. Oh no, sorry, that's for uh, him. But Fuka Fuji, 6.41. I wasn't too far off. This guy is 0-29. Oh, that's bad. That's really, really bad. But Fuka Fuji had the uh, one victory with the shutout, and then he got another victory like halfway through the year. That's awesome. That's that's quality hockey right there. That's absolute quality. A bunch of good gentlemen here playing for uh, Team Japan. So let's have a look at how many goals we allowed, how many goals we scored. I said 112 goals scored, I think, and then like 500 and. 15. I don't really remember what it was actually, but I, it was around that mark. I think 112 to 115 goals scored and over 500 allowed. Uh, we scored 109, so I wasn't too far off. That's pretty good guessing. And 555 goals were allowed. Wow! 6.7 goals per game. No team will ever be that bad. No team will ever come close to that bad. We let in 250 plus goals more than the Colorado Avalanche, and they suck. That just goes to show you how terrible we are. Absolutely awful. How is our power play? Just for just for fun, a whopping 12%, almost 13, so pretty good. We were definitely on fire. Uh, where'd all our wins come? Our <laughs> of course, both of our wins come on the road. Uh, we can't show anything in front of our Japanese fans. And uh, the last 10 games, 0, 10, and 0. It's not good. It's really not good. There's nowhere else to go but up. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to get a drink of water. I've been talking for 25 minutes straight. We're going to sim to the draft. I'll show you guys who won the cup. Hopefully we can win the draft lottery. That would be nice. And uh, I'll see you guys then. In year number one, the Calgary Flames win the Stanley Cup. Who saw that coming? Definitely not me. Johnny Goudreau gets his cup. There you go. That's kind of cool to see. Uh, the Calder Cup went to the Milwaukee Admirals, which I believe is the Nashville Predators AHL affiliate so uh, they get the Calder Cup for the uh, champion of the American Hockey League now for the draft lottery I'm nervous if we don't win the draft lottery I will be pissed okay you know what I won't be pissed if we don't win but if we pick anywhere out of second spot I want one or two if I get in the third or the fourth spot I will I will be upset my little Japanese self will be so upset if we uh, are even anywhere out of top two I am legitimately pretty nervous here. I've ran this uh, simulation a few times, and it has happened. Uh, oh, fuck, see what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Oh, okay, stay calm. Stay calm. Relax. It's okay. That is a kick in the Japanese nuts right there. That hurts. That really hurts. So I can only hope that Colorado and Carolina... They take Timothy Lilligran and I can get a shot at a number one forward to build my team around. How does a team with two victories all year, all year, to remind you, we went 2-80, and 80, drop in the draft lottery? How does that happen? That is awful. That is seriously just awful. Colorado wins the draft lottery. Who knows where they were? They could have been in fifth place. We lose. Not only do we lose, we drop two spots to third. Oh my god, we're by far the worst team. There's no team that was ever worse than us. And we, we're the worst team by a long shot, and we still lost the draft lottery. That hurts. That seriously hurts so badly. So what I can hope for is that I can hope that uh, either they don't take Patrick or Nico, and the one of them takes Timothy Lilligren. Now, I'm not saying that Timothy Lilligren would be bad, but I wouldn't mind uh, picking up a stud forward to build my team around. But you know what? If it does come down to Timothy Lilligren, I don't think I can complain too much. He's still going to be a beast for us, especially with the upgrades that I, uh, that I handed to him. So you can see here Danny Heatley ends off his NHL career almost 400 goals 843 points uh Ole Jokinen also says goodbye to hockey which is probably for the better he ends up with uh just under 800 NHL points 
There you go. That's nice to see. Good to see him gone. Uh, Yarmir Yager, 1,938 points. He calls it quits. 778 goals. Uh, how was his year this year? How did he do as a 40-whatever-year-old? Uh, he had go to the season stats just to see. He ended up having 70 points, 29 goals. That's freaking awesome. Yager, you're a beast. Henrik Sedin right behind him. Ilyash, uh, Shane Doan, Ole Jokinen, Mark Savard, Chris Pronger. So a bunch of the old guys are calling it quits as per usual they usually do in year number one now headed into the draft so i uh, are either getting one of three players we're either getting nolan patrick that nico hisher uh i still think i'm pronouncing his name wrong or we're getting timothy lilligren now since we are picking third i'm pretty sure we're gonna get timothy lilligren even if i was to try to trade up which is pretty much impossible i don't think that i can um i mean does colorado really need another first round pick i mean after all the sick players that they have do you really need it i could see carolina but we need it more than anybody come on i don't think i could even trade for this pick like i literally would not even i don't have anything to trade i, I don't have anything whatsoever i have this guy this daughtry guy uh but he has one year left on his deal so even if i was to add my first round pick he has a pretty decent Decent trade value which is nice to see even if I was to trade that and uh, my first for uh, Colorado's first it would just would not go through trade rejected they wouldn't do it because um he has one year left on his deal. It's not 100% confirmed that he's going to re-sign with Colorado. So they don't want to take that risk. And they're probably going to get Nolan Patrick, unfortunately. So here are the scouted players I can show you guys here. Pretty sure I scouted Timothy Lilligren. Yeah, there he is. High top four. So, I mean, he's going to be good no matter what. Uh, all these guys are really good. I mean, either one of these uh, top three guys I would love to get. I would love to get Nico. I made him really good. Nolan Patrick, I made him awesome. And uh, Timothy Lilligren, I made him pretty good as well. So hopefully, um, hopefully one of the teams takes a defenseman. Colorado, you could use a Timothy Lilligren. Your defense is weak. They're probably going to take Nolan Patrick with the first hour selection. Okay, they take Nico. Okay, Carolina. Yeah, Carolina is definitely going to take Nolan Patrick. They have a bunch of uh, pretty solid defensemen. Jake Bean, Hayden Fleury, Falk. They have a ton of defensemen. There you go. Nolan Patrick. High elite. Okay, they're both high elite. Now, I believe Timothy Lilligren is medium elite. Um, it's kind of unfortunate that we fell to third. That just, fuck, that sucks. That makes me so sad. How do we drop to third? That's some bullshit right there. Um... Either one of these players is going to be awesome. I think I'm going to go with Timothy Lilligren. Uh, hopefully this guy is not high uh, elite. I think I'm going to go with Timothy Lilligren. I'm pretty sure he's medium elite. Uh, Two-way defenseman. It didn't work out in New Jersey, so hopefully it works out here in... Uh, in Japan. Timothy Lilligren going from Sweden to Japan. Welcome to the team. He is the best player available. I didn't want to, yeah, he's medium elite. He's going to be awesome. And I did bump him up. So he is going to be very, very good. That guy's medium elite as well. Who else we got here? Uh, we got Velarde, uh, medium elite. So I mean, I think the reason why I took Lilligren is because I wanted to build my team around one of these two high elite players. If I missed out on them, I was going to build it around the best defenseman possible. Yeah, Yes, these guys are going to be quality NHL players, but it was either Patrick or Nico or Bust, pr pretty much. So, you know what? I'm totally fine with Timothy Lilligren. We're probably going to be in the same position uh, next year, having a top overall pick. So, it's all good. Jacob Chitring got redrafted back to uh, back to Columbus. That's kind of cool to see. Uh, and then Dylan Strom went to uh, Winnipeg. Wow, that's scary. You're going to have Patrick Laine and Dylan Strom. Ew, that's going to be nasty. That is going to be so, so nasty. Lawson Krause as well, back in the draft there, went to the St. Louis Blues. I think that's the only players uh, who are available to be drafted that I that I put back into the draft. Pretty sure anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and sim to our next pick, which is probably going to be the first pick in the second round because we got screwed. Actually, I know it is going to be the first pick in the second round. We got screwed there in the first round. Absolutely screwed. That sucks. That's really unfortunate. I can't believe that that even happened. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm realizing here we don't actually have a second or a third. We have a fourth. That does make sense because I was looking just for trade values and 
I remember seeing that we didn't have a second. Now, did Arizona end up trading their second for somebody? Who is that? They traded to Florida, but for who? Okay, I didn't even realize that. They get a medium starting goalie. That was supposed to be a big pick for us. That sucks. Now we have a couple of fourth round picks. We have two, uh, I think we have three. Yeah, we have three and then we have four. So we have four fourth round picks because uh, when I was trying to make room for uh, signing those players, I traded a bunch of crappy AHL players. But wow, that's, that's super unfortunate. This draft has really, really kicked me in the nuts. This sucks. I didn't think it would be this bad. I really didn't think it would be that bad. Um... I don't know if any of these players are going to be good. I'm just going to pick them as I see them. Uh, let's get a player to play with Timothy Lilligren, maybe. Hedberg, a seventh defenseman. There you go. Uh, medium top six. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, we'll sim that pick for a high AHL top two defenseman. I definitely I definitely got the better uh, option there. That's awesome. Let's see if we can go with the forward here. And then my last couple of picks will go for a... Uh, maybe go for a goaltender just for fun. Uh, Wyatt bear what a name Wyatt bear plus he's a big dude six foot 229 I like him we need a good Canadian kid and Wyatt bear is one of those guys there you go welcome to team Japan high AHL top six these guys probably won't be anything I mean I just got to make the picks as they are these guys probably won't turn out to be anything I always pick a goalie though just for fun uh, let's see what is available I think there was a fifth round guy available this is gonna be a long video oh my god um what else we got here for a goalie? This guy. Um, I'm just going to call him Marmalade. Uh, we're drafting a few Swedes here. We got D Marmalade, who is a fringe starter, medium fringe starter. That's not bad for the fourth round. That's that's really not that bad. And then uh, our last pick here in the fourth round, which will be our last selection that we are going to pick. Um, I'm just going to let the computer do the last one. But... Uh, Let's go here. What do we need? Let's go with with another Swede. You know what? We went with Swedes all night here. Let's go with uh, Davidson. Let's go with him. Jonathan Davidson does not sound like a Swedish guy. Uh, William Wickman, he sounds like a Swede, kind of. Um, or we could go with another defenseman, our third Swedish defenseman, uh, two-way defenseman. Sure, let's go with the defenseman. I've been going with that trend all night. AHL top four. Uh, what was he? Was he like, uh, was he anything decent? What was he? He was a medium AHL top two. Not that bad. We're going to go ahead and send the entire draft, go to the re-sign stage. We're not going to re-sign anybody. I'm going to check out the players that we missed out on, and then we're going to see what is available in free agency. All right, so we're going to get our first look here at uh, at the players that we ended up drafting this year. Let's go to unsigned. Where is Timothy Lilligren? 76 overall, medium elite. He's going to be ready probably not next year, but the year after that. So year number three where I want to be a competitive team. That's awesome. We're going to give him a contract right away. Give him the max rookie contract for the third overall pick. Hedberg was our fourth round pick. who's a 17-year-old uh, top six. 60 overall. Okay, we'll give you a contract. Anyone else? Uh, Wyatt Bear, 53. That's really bad. We actually don't have to give these guys a contract. I just want to get those two locked up. Gunnarsson was a guy we drafted in the fourth round. 72, 20 years old. That's pretty decent. That's not bad at all. And the rest were we're going to let sit uh, to at least next year. So we don't have to really sign a ton of players. I think we have to re-sign none of these Japanese guys. Uh, Zubinik Mahalik, sure, will give you a contract. 1.8 for two years. That's fantastic. How about 1.6? Um, I mean, he's going to be on our team. He is going to be a part of this team for right now. He's better than anything we have, so why not? Uh, Stu Bickle, um, no, I don't want you, so no thank you. Uh, Smith, you're a 32-year-old, no thank you. Alexander Semin, I will give a contract to, not for two years though. You know, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you, we're gonna have a ton of cap room, so I don't really care. I'll give you 3.3 for one year. Um, all these guys are gone. Wakabayashi, you have a great name, but unfortunately you're toast. Uh, all these guys I have to give a contract to. Well, I don't have to, but a few of them I want to. Uh, some decently young players. Yeah, 24 years old. There you go. This guy's looking pretty nice. He doesn't want to be here, but who does? This team will be good one day. I promise you. I promise you. Uh, all these guys I'm just going to give a contract to, and then we're going to see what players we missed out on. I actually forgot to check the goaltenders that we drafted as well, so let me go ahead and check that 
out. Uh, Marmalade, 69 overall in the fourth round. That's not bad at all. Daniel Marmalade. Look at this kid. Okay, 69 overall, medium French starter. That's pretty decent. Uh, did we get this guy in the fifth round? The sixth round. Okay, wow. Computer did some pretty good drafting. That's not so bad. All right, I'll take that. That's pretty decent, actually. Unfortunately, all these goalies are going to go bye-bye. we got to find new goalies uh, for the time being, but uh, all those guys are going to be gone. So Vancouver ended up picking this guy, who is uh, 62 Elite with the uh, fourth pick. Now, Columbus and Carolina. So Carolina ended up picking Nolan Patrick, who's 78 High Elite. This kid's going to be sick. Uh, and then obviously Colorado with the first round or sorry with the first overall pick they end up picking uh, this guy who I did want really really badly I wanted Nico but he ends up going to uh, Colorado 79 high elite so uh, it sucks that we missed out on those guys but really I mean ugh, it's just the way it goes it sucks but it's just the hand I was dealt that's why it's gonna be challenging man this is not gonna be an easy franchise mode let's see who's gonna come back Alexander Semin says, no, I want to win. You know what? That's totally fair. You can go to free agency. That's fine. Lucas Lessio is back. Dylan Olsen, Zminik Mahalik, all those rookie guys. Not rookies, but young players who I did sign. Marmalade said, no, I have a full roster. What are you talking about? There's no way I have a full roster. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe I do. I just got to release some players, actually. I got to go re-sign those guys, and then uh, we'll see what's available in free agency. Alexander Semin, you're gone. So I can already see a problem here. We've only spent $11 million somehow. I don't know how, but we have uh, $57 million in cap space. So not only are we going to have to sign a ton of free agents, we're not a ton. I don't want to go too crazy, but uh, we are going to have to give some players some outrageous contracts. I just, I just released two players. You know what? I'll sign you guys at a different time. doesn't matter. Um, all these guys are gone though. So, uh, we're going to have to give out some crazy, crazy contracts to meet the minimum requirement for the, uh, for the salary cap. So let's go ahead here and let's, uh, Let's see what we can do. So sign free agents. I know uh, probably right away you're going to see Tyler Johnson up there. He usually is. Uh, yeah, he's right there. All of Reckman Larson still hasn't signed. Really? Wow, that's that's pretty surprising. Uh, Mika Zabinajad, Tyler Johnson, like all these guys are available, but are they going to make our team better in year one? Or sorry, in year two? Is it really worth it for us to go ahead and give all of Reckman Larson, whose morale is way down? He's only 86 overall, listed as a top four, so he is up set he wants to sign and for cheap 5.3 million for three years um but i don't know if it would be good for us to do that here's a list at all of the uh, i don't want to give up any picks either so i have to go players who are ufa because i don't want to give up any picks in some sort of rfa crap uh so here's everyone that is available you guys can let me know who you think we should go after and why and how many players we should go after because we do need a full roster i cannot oh max domi's still available Three million bucks. We could bring him back. Uh, we did give him a chance to sign, but apparently he didn't want to. We have to have a complete roster no matter what. Uh, but that doesn't mean I can sign a few pretty decent players, then go sign a bunch of shit players to still be a bad team. Um, I don't want to sign pretty much everybody like above here. Pretty much sign everyone above Max Domi and hope for the best. Hopefully we can make a team out of that with $55 million. I don't want to do that. That seems so boring to me. I want to build this team through the draft, but we do need some players. So uh, that's kind of the question of the episode, this long-ass episode. What are we going to do in free agency? Because we pretty much have an empty team right now. Here's all the goalies available. Scott Wedgwood wouldn't be that bad, 24 years old. Uh, he'd be a pretty decent goaltender. Uh, but we do need a goalie, and I I want a decent goalie like I wouldn't mind getting like Michael Neuverth or Jonathan Bernier might not be that bad um but I mean there's there's lots of options available I don't think we have any players in the NHL that's not true we have Lucas Lesio who is right now our best player Alexander Semin said he doesn't want to come back that's fine I'm not worried buddy you don't want to come here that's okay I'm not going to force you to come play here I'm not worried about that. I do want to see how many players we actually have under contract that can play next year because as of right now, Lucas Lesio is the only one that I can actually think of. 
Um, right off the bat, uh, yeah, no one. <laughs> Pretty much the Binnick Mahalik, Lucas Lesio, and uh, where is he? Dylan Olsen are our three NHL players. We need to sign a ton of players, like a ton. Uh, so you guys can let me know. I want to see some big comments out there. I want you guys, you know what I want you to do? Since you guys are my assistant GMs and you guys do help me out a lot, um, I'll go through this list afterwards and I'll say, you know, who I want and who I don't want. But from everyone available here in the UFA department, we need a full team. We have one forward and two defensemen, okay? So we need to get four more defensemen and uh, we need to get uh, 11 forwards to be able to actually play next year. So which forwards and why? Make me a complete team. Money is not an option. I pretty much have 58 million bucks to spend. Let me know who we should sign and why. I think Max Domi would be pretty cool to bring to Japan. I gave him the opportunity to sign elsewhere. It's not like I just kept him for my own and just hit him in the minors until year two. He's ready to be signed, and I wouldn't mind getting Max Domi. So you guys can let me know. I want to see a lineup you guys can come up with. Now, I don't want to be super good either. I still want to be a shitty team. It's kind of a shitty situation that you have to build through free agency just to get to year number two, just to be able to play. Uh, it's kind of shitty that we have to do that, but, but that doesn't mean we're not going to build through the draft, build through trades. This is just to get us through year number two. We could sign all the worst guys if you guys think that's a good call too. We could sign all of these 80 overall guys have a complete team of 80 overalls and still finish 29th you know but I think that you know maybe starting to get some younger guys maybe getting that Max Domi isn't the worst thing he could get first line minutes maybe getting a player like uh, like Stone wouldn't be, wouldn't be that bad Michael Stone this guy's a beast in pack attack uh, I mean just some people who can actually play who aren't Japanese I think that would be the way to go thanks for watching guys I've talked for almost 50 minutes straight my my voice is dead. Thanks for watching. Let me know what we should do uh, in the next episode, and I'll see you guys then.